iPhone 14 Pro versus iPhone 15. These two phones have a lot of things in common. They also come at a fairly similar price at this point. So I wanted to go through the most important features in these two phones and see which one might be a better choice for you. And of course, we're gonna start off with the design. Even though these phones are fairly similar, they do have some major design differences. First of all, the 14 Pro has a stainless steel frame as opposed to the aluminum frame of the iPhone 15. And honestly, even though stainless steel is a bit more premium, I personally like the aluminum size of the iPhone 15 much more. If the stainless steel on the iPhone 14 Pro was not this glossy and wasn't leaving this many fingerprints, every time you touch it basically that would be a different story but since that's not the case i actually like the matte aluminum on the 15 much more it doesn't leave any fingerprints on it one other difference is of course those rounded edges on the new 15 series which may not be that noticeable on camera when you take a look at both of these phones but the 15 does feel much much more comfortable to hold exactly because of these slightly rounded edges on the sides the 14 pro is much more well edgy and it just kind of jams into your hand way more also there's a really noticeable weight difference iphone 14 pro weighs uh, 206 grams while the 15 stands at only uh, 171 grams and it's definitely noticeable and even though again the lighter 15 feels much more comfortable to hold the weight of the 14 pro makes it feel much more premium. They both have Dynamic Island, of course, so absolutely no difference there. And I'm really happy that Apple decided to include the Dynamic Island on the regular models this time around. One other difference is the bezels on the 15 are a little bit thinner all around, but it's not something that you would notice day to day. And of course, the last uh, and most major design difference of all is uh, the cameras on the back. So the 14 Pro, of course, has the triple camera setup, while the 15 only gets two cameras. That's the main wide and the ultra wide, uh, while you get the addition of the telephoto lens on the 14 Pro. In my opinion, both of these phones look really good. I really like what Apple did, especially with this black iPhone 15 this year. It's just really minimal and sleek. Uh, with like matte black all around and of course this is the first generation where the regular iPhone loses that glossy back in exchange for this uh, matte finish and I'm all about it. Flipping the phones around you are greeted with the 6.1 inch display on both of these phones and they are very very similar in a lot of ways. They have the same uh, color contrast, sharpness, resolution, uh, pixel density and even the brightness so they both have a standard 1000 nits brightness but peaking at 2000 nits outdoors in direct sunlight so not a lot of differences there but there is one big difference when it comes to these phones and that is of course that the iphone 14 pro has the 120 hertz refresh rate while the 15 is locked at 60 hertz and that is definitely not a small difference and it's something that's really really noticeable uh, when you're using the phone day to day. The 14 Pro just feels much snappier due to the high refresh rate, especially if you're like scrolling. Is that something that's a deal breaker? No, I don't think most people would care that much about the high refresh rate. It is really noticeable like when I'm holding both of these phones in my hand at the same time, then yes, I, of course I can notice the difference. Uh, but like using just the 15 for an extended period of time, you really stop noticing it in like a day or two. You just kind of get used to the 60 hertz and, and the phone doesn't feel laggy or slow or anything like that. Now, is that something that's going to be important to you? Well, I don't know. Like if you are coming from a 120 hertz phone, you will definitely notice the downgrade to 60 if you go with the regular iPhone 15. But if all phones that you had in the past were 60 hertz phones, you will absolutely not notice the difference. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments how I feel about the refresh rate. Like I said, I am using the regular iPhone 15 and don't really care about it that much, even though I do notice it when I grab something like the 14 Pro. One additional difference is the fact that the 14 Pro has always on display while the regular 15 doesn't have that feature so if you're a fan of the always on display again that's something to take into consideration okay so the next thing i want to talk about is performance and this is going to be a short segment of the video for sure because well they are exactly the same both of these phones have the a16 bionic chip and the chip is really fast and both of them are gonna stay fast and responsive for a very long time you can play basically any game out there except a few like AAA titles that like need ray tracing and stuff like that. That's available only with iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max. But other than that, you can play anything you want on them. 
and basically anything like video rendering and exporting is really fast on both of them. So now when it comes to battery life, again, pretty similar experience, at least on my end. Both phones can get me through the day with minimal issues. They're not like the best battery lives out there, but they are pretty decent and will most likely last you the whole day. If you are a heavy user, there may be a few days where you would need to top them up from time to time, but that's really rare in my opinion. And again, there's not that big of a difference. Uh, if I had to put a number on it, I would say that the iPhone 15 maybe gets like half an hour more battery life in some situations, maybe an hour max. And it's not something that should affect your choice at least between these two phones you're not going to see that big of a difference that that you know would make you choose one over the other one thing that i would like to mention when it comes to battery life is that there have been uh, reports of the iphone 14 pro battery health draining rapidly now this phone is at 89 percent right now and it's a year and a half old or something like that it doesn't happen what every iPhone 14 Pro out there, of course not. Most of them actually don't have this problem, but that's something that you might want to take into consideration. Although, uh, like I said, I don't think it's a big issue, but I just wanted to mention it anyway. Aside from that, they both charge at the same speed. They both support wireless charging and of course have MagSafe and everything else. So no differences there. But there is one big difference that we didn't get a chance to talk about yet. And that is of course the USB-C port on the iPhone 15 versus Lightning on the 14 Pro. And even though a lot of people made a huge fuss about it, I don't really care that much. Uh, yes, it is convenient to have USB-C because now I have just one charger that I can use with all my devices. So my MacBook, iPhone, iPad, everything is USB-C. That is definitely convenient. But other than that, there is not that big of a difference, especially because the USB-C on the regular iPhone 15 still supports only 2.0 speeds, while the 15 Pro and Pro Max do get a faster USB-C port. You know, it doesn't affect charging, of course, in any way, but uh, when it comes to the 15 Pro and Pro Max, data transfer, stuff like that is much faster. But like I said, since the regular 15 is also capped at 2.0 speeds, uh, there's no difference between Lightning and USB-C there. So when it comes to these two phones in particular, the only difference is basically convenience. If you're using a bunch of Lightning accessories and you don't want to, you know, change all of them, then of course the 14 Pro is going to be a better choice for you. But if you are a bigger fan of USB-C and you feel like that's more comfortable for you, iPhone 15 is better there. And of course, we have to talk about the cameras and they are much more similar than you might think. Of course, the iPhone 14 Pro has three cameras on the back. So the main 48 megapixel wide lens, as well as the 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto with a 3x optical zoom while the regular iPhone 15 lacks that telephoto lens, so it does have the main 48 megapixel wide lens and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And in some cases, I actually think that the regular iPhone 15 might be a better choice for a lot of people, at least. The main difference between these cameras, I don't think is the lack of the telephoto lens on the 15. I actually think the main difference is the fact that the 14 Pro supports those pro formats, so pro raw and pro res for video, while you just don't have that option on the regular 15. Now, is that something that's important to you? Well, I don't know. It really depends on how you're using your phone. Those are definitely, you know, pro formats and they can be useful for a lot of people. And they basically give you a photo or a video that has a lot more information in it. So it is much better for editing later on. But then again, if you are someone that just wants to jump into the camera and quickly take a photo or a video that you don't have to tinker with later on to edit it, you know, add contrast colors and stuff like that, then actually the 15 might be a better choice for you. And I almost forgot this, even though the 15 doesn't have that third lens, since they did switch to the 24 megapixel shots, you actually do get an option of a 2x uh, well, semi-optical zoom, let's call it. It's not actually like a third lens that you would use like you would on the 14 Pro, but they would just punch in on the shot and give you a 12 megapixel result without the loss of quality. So it's basically like you have one additional lens that's a 2x zoom. The quality of the like the regular out of the box, no tinkering shot with these phones are really, really similar. I actually feel like the 15 does come out on top in some cases, but in 90% of the situations, you would not be able to notice a huge difference. And both of these cameras are definitely great. In my opinion, it just comes down to those pro formats. If you're someone that really wants and need those, then of course the 14 Pro would be your only option at least 
between these two phones. Long story short, should you get the iPhone 14 Pro or the iPhone 15? Well, if you absolutely need the 120 hertz refresh rate, always on display, and those pro camera formats, then the 14 Pro would definitely be a better choice, but it does come at a slightly bigger price depending on where you find it. It will be like 50 to 100 bucks more than the regular 15, maybe a bit more than that. But to me, the iPhone 15, even though it's not a pro phone, definitely wins in the design department. It has slightly better battery life and it's really fast, responsive, reliable, and it will definitely last you for a long, long time. So let me know in the comments how you feel about these two phones. Do you have any of them? Are you thinking about getting one of them? And which one do you feel like is a better choice for you? Video over.